I am so excited about this one. It's here. It's my Osmo Pocket. It's arrived. That is so small. So this is a quick review of this little thing. The Osmo Pocket, which is a fantastic three-axis gimbal from DJI. It was launched about two weeks ago and I got mine on Friday. Um, it's now Monday and I've had a play with it over the weekend. So here's some thoughts on what's good and what's bad. So what's really nice about this is its size. It's so small. I mean, uh, to give a comparison, there's a GoPro. Now, in most cases, when I take the GoPro out, I actually put it onto this little tripod as well. So in terms of kind of size, you end up more like that for the GoPro and then that for the Osmo. So it's actually smaller than what I'm normally carrying as my kind of really tiny throw in a pocket camera. And much, it's about the same weight as the GoPro without the tripod, but it just feels much lighter and sleeker. So when you first turn it on, it'll initialize, get ready to shoot, and then it's good to go. It has a screen on it that um, is pretty small, but it's usable, you can see what's going on. And that also has a microphone and this little lightning adapter that I'll come on to in a second. In terms of the buttons, everything is done with these two buttons on the front here. So you have the function button that switches between modes, so we're in photo or video, and then the record button that starts us recording if you've got an SD card in there. So what I've generally found with this is it's very easy to get it out of pocket and get shooting straight away. It comes with this little, little case as well, which is really neat. Um, it doesn't add much to the size or weight, um, which a lot of cases of these kind of things do. And actually, the Osmo has a really neat function that as you turn it off, it puts the camera in exactly the right orientation so that when you put it into the case, the camera doesn't get damaged. And then, there you go. A really, really small package that you can just carry around with you wherever you go. Also keeps the charging port available so you can charge it. Now this apparently has about two hours of battery life, which isn't a lot, um, but it's not nothing either. Um, because it's so easy to take out your pocket and use, you're not going to be taking long, long shots. Well, I'm not going to be. Two hours of battery life should get me through the day. I'd have liked a bit more, but I guess it's a trade-off on battery against weight and those kind of things that I would prefer to keep it small and maybe take a little power bank to charge it when I'm not using it. It's a shame they can put a user-changeable battery in here, but um, for two hours, especially with this, I'll be able to keep charging it as I need to. In terms of the image quality, actually, it's the camera's pretty good. I mean, if you're comparing to a GoPro, it's absolutely fine, fantastic even. Does 4K 60 frames a second, or 1080 120 frames a second slow motion. So you get can get these really nice, smooth slow motion shots. My biggest gripe with this at the moment, and maybe it's me, maybe it's uh, something I need to work a bit more on, is actually um, when you're taking footage, it has a lot of uh, smart functions in it. So it has active tracking on faces and um, objects and things like that. And so when I was uh, filming myself, I'll show you the clip here, uh, just outside of Tesco's uh, <laughs> car park, but it uh, attached itself to Lindsay's face rather than my face. And so I was trying to kind of turn it back around to, um, to get back into shot and uh, it was 
filming something else. And I, th I can't work out whether that is that the number of active functions and software things on this is just too many or whether I get need to get better at knowing what it's going to do and how it's going to do it. Um, a very neat function it has is on the front here you have uh, in the box a choice of accessory adapters. So you have a lightning one or a USB-C one depending on the phone you have and then as you plug in here that means I can now get my phone and plug it in. And what it will do is it will launch the DJI app. Oh, I don't have an SD card. And then you're in with a much bigger screen, uh, a lot more flexibility on the features you can access. Um, you can access some more of the pro features, including focusing and um, moving the gimbal and things like that on this much bigger screen of your iPhone. So again, I'm still not carrying any more with me. It just uh, really opens up the possibilities if uh, when I mentioned that I thought focus was the problem, it gives me the option to do that a bit more with this. And it's still quite a handy thing to just walk around and film with. Mechanical gimbals are always going to be smoother than software stabilization. The phone stabilization is getting better. The GoPro stabilization is really good, but a Go uh, mechanical gimbal is always going to look smoother and will work in high light, low light, um, will give you way more options. So I'm really pleased to see this out as a vlogging, as a take with me for family days out, everything like that. Um, it won't replace my Fuji camera, but it will definitely give me loads of video where I wouldn't want to take a full camera. So I'm really pleased to have got it. Um, I'm going to keep playing with it, see if I can work out that point of it losing my subject or I'm doing something wrong and um, get used to shooting with it a bit more to get better at using it.